and thanks to all of you who got up early on a Sunday. This is going to be an incredibly exciting talk, so if anyone here has a heart condition, just warn me beforehand. Okay, I'm exaggerating. Let's really begin. Hi, I'm uh, Susie Felber. Uh, that's my Twitter handle there, so you can, if you want to pick up your phone during the presentation and say things like, wow, her hair is amazing, or already my life has changed, I've learned so much at Susie Felber, you can do that, that's fine. Okay, let's start. The secret of change is to focus all your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Socrates. Okay, I just Googled um, inspirational business coat, and uh, I took the first website and the first quote for that. Here's a quote I like better. If you want to dispose of a dead body, put it on the second page of Google. And I heard someone say that, and that person didn't remember who said it, and I tried to Google that quote, and I didn't find it, so hats off. And as for Socrates, I thought that first quote kind of smelled funny, just didn't seem like the ancient Greek to me. And uh, in fact, I had to Google three pages deep to find out, even though every site attributes that quote to Socrates, it was actually a character named Socrates in a, 19, uh, in a book from 1980. It was not indeed um, uh, the Socrates that we know of, and I'm going to say that's good news. Humans are still needed. And this talk is going to be about humans. Yay. OK, Munich, hi. I've had such a good time already. There's soup that has noodles that are like pancakes. Um, I don't know how you keep them al dente, al dente. I've almost been run over on your very subtle bike paths. Um, <laughs> you're, and I'm here, and I'm alive. And I don't know how many of you here uh, saw talks uh, yesterday. Maybe just a couple, OK. Um, we had one man demonstrating how he could type with his brain waves, and another woman who did DIY um, coding fashion. She let the audience play with her outfit uh, via their smartphones. So not to disappoint you, I'm going to have sharks with lasers, and I'm going to show you how I built them using only JavaScript. OK, bring in the tank helmet. Bring in the, OK, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you very seriously about what I do, what I did, and why it was super duper. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. I said, are you ready? Yeah. Woo. Thank you. So um, I'm global content director at Withings. Uh, yes, we were a little French startup. I worked for them for a year. We got bought by Nokia. We were with Nokia for two years. And now we're a startup again. Long story. But anyway, we make connected devices that uh, are uh, for your health and to make your health better. And in fact, right now, I'm going to turn on my continuous heart rate to see if I'm actually nervous. OK. So yes, I travel the world with my scale. Look at that Instagram-worthy uh, photo. And the best part of traveling with your smart scale is you find out what the chambermaid weighs. Now, the first time it happened, I was in Paris, and I decided to look at my app. And I do love baguette, and I do love butter. And I had gained 10 pounds in two days. And I was completely freaked out until I noticed the timestamp was when I was at the Withings office. And now, whenever I bring my scale and I travel, I love finding out what the, um, what the staff weighs. It's awesome. Um, and I work out. Uh, that's me two weeks ago. <laughs> I ran a costume 5K for charity. Um, it was awesome. I raised over $600 running it with my family to help the homeless. And it was raining. And that costume was awesome at first. And then it became like a lead sheet. Um, and there were gale force winds. Anyway, 
So uh, Withings tries, this is like their mission statement, they try to build beautiful, easy to use devices and apps to help people improve their health. Um, I'm not gonna talk about what we do with hospitals. I'm not gonna talk about the data studies that I help with that are really interesting. Um, but to me, the question of health is important and personal. My dad was a doctor. And that's him and that's me. Oh, I'm adorable, yes. Um, and that is how doctors dressed in the 70s. <laughs> Amazing, but true. So, I am old, fat, female, a mom. I work from home. I'm more than 5,000 kilometers away from our headquarters. And yeah, people, I put that in kilometers for you. Thank you. you are welcome. The metric is for science and way to go Europe for going to kilometers. And I have a diverse and wacky work history. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. And I just want to say these qualities are my superpower and I'm going to prove it. I also want to go back and say when I say I'm fat, oh Lord, everyone goes, you're not fat. I'm, you're not fat. They think I'm saying it like I don't like myself and I, it's the patriarchy that wants me to lose weight. No, 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 people. I would be confident two, three hundred pounds more than this. I suffer from overconfidence and the only reason I use my scale is because uh, that new, like, it's a mobility issue. If I want to be fit, I like to be a little bit less. Whatever you want to weigh, that's fine. No judgments. Okay. Just want to say that if anyone was wondering. Okay. So students, where are my students at? Do we have any here? Okay. I see just a couple over there. Um, imagine if 20 years from now, uh, what you're doing doesn't exist yet. Um, that everything you're studying will have no application. Don't tell your parents if they are paying for your education. Um, but that is exactly what happened to me. Uh, in college, uh, I was a kid, I loved video games, I learned all kinds of early programming languages. But in college, I had no email, no smartphone, no websites, no apps. And in fact, I saw a fax machine during my college internship at a publishing company for the first time and I was so excited that I just stood by it like, Oh my God, next we're having flying cars. It was so amazing to me. And um, that was not my college internship, but I was part of a troupe of dancing leaves. It was awesome. Okay. Uh, here are some other things you're not gonna find on LinkedIn. I've worked for large agencies. I've worked for major networks and the BBC and and Viacom, I've worked for many serious companies, many startups. Here's some things you won't find on my LinkedIn because they generally freak people out. Um, I was and have been a comedian for over 20 years doing improv and stand-up. Um, I've been in movies. Uh, there are two pictures there uh, where uh, 20 years apart, uh, they're performing stand-up in Paris and on the right I had a show in Manhattan for seven years that I hosted and booked. No difference, I look exactly the same except for the glasses. Isn't that true? Yes. Moving on. I was in a touring company called Nice Jewish Girls Gone Bad. Awesome. Uh, it was a large size model, which really just means a normal sized woman. Um, and I did Us Weekly's Fashion Police for eight years where I um, made jokes about outfits. And don't worry, I make many more about myself. I performed in dive bars uh, multiple times a night. I did benefits, uh, lots of benefits for charity. I hosted the Women's March down in DC, all the while holding down more than full-time jobs, which I'll tell you more about. And uh, as you can see, as you can guess, comedy, much like tech, is mostly boys. And so there was no... Uh, no surprise when I went to tech. I also wrote a video game that was published by Simon & Schuster. Um, <laughs> you have to really go through a sim now to uh, run the old uh, Mac software to do it. Little known fact, a uh, lot of people who are very famous right now worked on it. Do any of you know Tina Fey, 30 Rock? She was a voice on this game. 
exciting if you know her. Uh, we wrote and did the whole website. And I had things that are uh, not as impressive, like writing copy for energy drinks aimed at the Latin market. Okay, so when I was at Comedy Central, after I had a theater career and I was a stage manager and an actress doing Shakespeare, I went to Comedy Central and um, I was in the on-air department. Television was my dream, but that's because the web didn't exist. So I started volunteering my time for the web when most people didn't know we had a website. And quite unintentionally, it was the smartest, best thing I ever did. Um, the, at this time, you know, we had email, but if we needed, or I was in producing, if we needed even a sound clip of a car horn, we had to run blocks down to the studio. There was no emailing sound clips or videos. I got a lot of exercise. Um, and so, yeah, we would do full service. I was working with uh, CRM uh, before there was a word for it. We were doing um, games. Uh, that we programmed for the website. We were having a lot of fun. And most people didn't know we had a website at Comedy Central, so they let us do what we wanted. So um, I left uh, that. I wrote for the first interactive network that ABC owned. That was a fantastic experience, working with technology and entertainment. The only problem is most people didn't have broadband. So yeah, that was an idea that was way too ahead of its time. Um, I wrote, edited, and managed thousands of blog posts. I started doing social media before it had a name. Years later, I was at a TV network and I created their Facebook page and I got told, why would a TV network wanna be on Facebook? There were no TV networks on Facebook. I was like, but we should be there. And they're like, take it down. No, no TV network should be on Facebook. And then uh, BBC was an early adopter. Uh, the History Channel was an early adopter. I left it up on the sly, because those people weren't on Facebook anyway. And being early was actually a huge win for the company. Um, I used my producing and editing skills to do web video, and I learned how to do HTML, CSS, and then a lot of other things that if I couldn't build it, at least I knew how to fix it. I never wanted to be uh, completely helpless when talking to people who were smarter than me, uh, talking to the developers, because there's nothing worse than being told what to do by someone who has no idea what you're doing and how hard it is. Um, when I was working on the web in the early days, they told me traffic doesn't matter. It was the go-go days. There was lots of money. Um, it was before the dot-com uh, crash, and I didn't go to business school, but I was like, I think traffic's gonna matter at some point. So I started looking at analytics with no prompting, um, taught myself, looked into it, saw what worked, and if it worked, I did more of it. That was back when it was easier to kind of game Google and do what we all know now is SEO, which doesn't work as well, but in those days, it worked. Um, so it did crash. But I had remade myself against all odds. I had become indispensable and highly employable, and I was having a lot of fun. So now I'm going to talk about what I did and maybe why I'm here. As I said, we do a lot of important scientific stuff. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, this comes from the perspective of we work really hard on cool stuff that I am passionate about, and I want to get the word out about it. So, I love social media, and I would say that all my years doing comedy in bars, that was the original social listening. And in fact, doing a talk here today is actually a little bit hard for me, because when you go to a conference, people are incredibly polite. You don't know what they're thinking. If they hate you, they're loathing you silently. Um, in comedy, <laughs> there's always a continual response. So if you hate me, go ahead, yell it out. I'll have a snappy comeback. Um, here's an example. We, someone spotted our blood pressure uh, cuff on television on a show called The Flash. And they said, oh wow, we should share that. I said, wait, before we share that, let's find out what episode it was. Oh, we don't know it. Let's find out what episode it is. Okay, we found out what episode. Turned out that episode was directed by Kevin Smith. I knew Kevin Smith had had a big weight loss story and he had had a heart attack and he was friends with the celebrity that we had worked with. 
And so I thought there was a really good chance. Let's ping Kevin Smith, who directed the episode. And he said, I was unfamiliar with the product when we shot the app. The props department gave me options. I picked yours just because it looked futuristic. Two weeks later, I had my heart attack. Ever since then, I've used your awesome device nearly every morning to track my blood pressure. Hashtag proud owner. This is like an unpaid win of wins, a beautiful thing, spreading the message of how important blood pressure monitoring is with a guy who has millions of followers. Here's another one, super hooked into the comedy community. This guy's a, a, a very successful comedy writer and uh, I gifted him samples. He showed them off online, no money changing hands. And Kumail, do any of you know Silicon Valley? Yeah, it's a great show. If you haven't watched it, I adore it. And he asked, real question, how does the scale know body fat percentage? Well, when one of my comedy heroes asks the question, boom, less than 24 hours later, <laughs> I wrote a blog post personally, how do our smart scales know body fat? And it was a personal, like, hey, Kamel, you asked? Here you go. Here's um, BIA. Here's the technology behind it. Here's how we track body fat percentage. Um, I like reaching out to diverse people. This woman, who I knew from way back, 10 years ago started a vegan soup company in Washington, D.C. Uh, she really had a message of wanting uh, uh, food should be more local, more environmentally friendly, blah, blah, blah. I gifted her an activity tracker. And just a couple weeks ago, she was on a network show called Shark Tank with her mom. She founded the company with her mom. And she's wearing our watch. And she's wearing our watch just because she adores it. Another wonderful unpaid win. I also, you know, we do fitness, but I'm not a hard body. I'm, you might be surprised to learn this. Um, but I like reaching out to diverse groups. Uh, like readers and writers. Now, readers and writers are not usually, they're not the kind of group that you would think to target fitness, but they are highly educated. All of us readers and writers sit too much, um, probably have a great need to get fit, but are ignored. We are always going to the hard body sites or the sites that want to inspire you in that way. And so my mother was a romance writer. I'm very keyed into the community and I like to bring in diverse communities and it's been really successful. They're so thrilled to be included in something that's outside their wheelhouse. So this is why I'm here. Late one night, I'm in bed, I saw a tweet. Now I don't run social media, I just have the ability to answer if I want to as the company. I saw a tweet, hey tech developers, it'd be really nice if you put a pregnancy mode in your weight training workout apps. I'm getting really tired of my smart scale and exercise apps yelling at me for weight gain decreased activity. So basically, she was pregnant and her scale was telling her, you're getting fat. Um, she went on, and I want to say that when I saw this, and I didn't follow her on Twitter, I saw it because someone I knew had responded to her, there was almost no action on this. Here I'm giving away the story, look how much action that got in the end, um, with 14,000 likes and over 2,000 retweets. She said, I'm not talking about small developers either. My Apple Watch is reminding me daily about my fitness goals. I was meeting them until about two weeks ago. Now it's a lot more difficult. No way to pause the notifications. I have to turn them off entirely. Um, so she's going on. She says, in regard to weight gain, women should be able to track their pregnancy weight gain without the app telling them they're unhealthy. Absolutely. Totally agree. Wait, what? Because you know what? What she w wanted, I had already worked on with a big team of people. And we worked really hard. Okay? A l when I say that I worked on it, I want you to know there's an army behind me. This is not just uh, at Susie Felber, who is awesome, did this. It was a lot of people, it was a lot of developers, everything. Um, but I worked really hard on it and I was really proud of it. 
and we had launched it in May uh, 2017. But you can launch something, you can have a PR blitz and whew, you're on to the next innovation and maybe it never breaks through. So then there are women dogpiling on this thread. I really wonder why on earth no one has thought of it. It's unreal. It shows who they lack behind the scenes at these companies. Yeah, that's what my how is implicitly pointing at. I mean, they are having a good time, right? Um, and I could have spoken up as the company. I could have said, hi, you should try our pregnancy tracker. But no, I decided I am a real human and it would be better if the real human spoke up. I'm not just, um, and trying to get attention for myself. It's just I had noticed she, Swapna, was a NASA journalist, and I wanted the personal connection. So I said, hi, I'm a real person behind the scenes at a health tech company, and we did do it, and I'm a squishy writer, nerd, mom, and I help create pregnancy mode um, with the health made app. Oh, and baby weighing mode is really neat, too. So. She said a lot of people had shouted it out. Then all kinds of people start coming out of the woodwork saying how great pregnancy mode is and oh, I love your watch, I swim with it, it looks like a regular watch. Like you can't and you shouldn't force anyone to say anything nice about your stuff, but it was happening organically. These women were sharing, so she became aware of what we did, she said, and then, I was so proud of this and so excited, um, she's quoting the tweet of this woman, Melanie, who ran a video game studio. She was a CEO of a video game studio. I love video games. And she actually shared her pregnancy weight gain um, uh, with the healthy ranges and everything, and I was so excited. I'm, look at this cool woman. Um, it's, it's nice when you get to see who's actually using your stuff. So, um, a lot of developers, which was great, reached out. Because of her thread, it was like a, a revelation. True, a lot of people also said, well, you know what, uh, the percentage of users who are pregnant uh, doesn't really pay to develop something like that. Um, but. As you know, if you are a health tracking app and you know half your customers are women and then they are completely let down at a point in their uh, journey when weight is actually super important and a medical issue, um, it behooves you to think of these people. And I know you don't always have the resources. I know it's harder to do. Um, then we became a Twitter moment. Hacha! <laughs> Because when we became a Twitter moment, you know, you can try to get press for something and they'll be like, yeah, we can fit that in in six months, thanks very much. But if it became a Twitter moment, suddenly every news outlet decided this was hot news. We were also on all the morning shows, people discussing um, how tech was perhaps sometimes letting down women. And then uh, Swapna herself uh, wrote an article on Engadget and interviewed me um, about the app and why uh, and what part of it I had done. And so yes, I felt like a superhero. Also, Swapna pointed out that she was like, I also kind of like that in the app the main you know woman is a brown woman. Um, and in fact, that was a very intentional choice. I felt like so much of what we were doing was just a lot of blonde people. And there's a whole other story there, where even when you're working with a stock photo company, when I tried to get people who weren't white and blonde, I was told I had to pay double. I was like, what? Really? I mean, I want some South Asian people, I want some Hispanic people. No, they're double. They're harder to find. And I'm thinking, those people, <laughs> uh, anyway, just FYI, with stock photo companies, you might pay double um, to just not have blonde people. Nothing against blonde people. Okay, so I was passionate about what we created, and during development, as I said, I was not the only person behind it, but I was the only woman who had had babies in her body, and there were certain things I could speak to, like uh, 
I said we had to add content on postpartum depression. And in a very technical way, they were like, but that doesn't happen during pregnancy. What? Why would you want that? I'm like, that's exactly when people need to know about it so that if they go loco, um, uh, they understand how to deal with it and that it's a real medical condition. Um, I also felt important that we had to tweak the UX for a lot of pregnancies don't come to term. This is something that we have to deal with. We have to let people out easily and, and just this, just the reality, so that was kind of fun. And we did a lot of unique content. Both We worked with a doctor, medically serious content, and then we did content like crap you don't need to register for. So, I know I'm different, and there aren't many people in tech like me, but, and I'm very appreciative of what I do and the people I do it with. So, I think when we talk about diversity, there's this whole kumbaya that it's the right thing to do. Of course it's the right thing to do, but it actually pays. And as I said, I I'm, I'm never went to business school, but it pays. Um, from hiring people with disabilities, um, in fact, uh, one of my full-time editors is legally blind, and she's amazing, <laughs> to allowing truly flexible work, like me, I've worked from home for many companies. Um, this is how to attract and retain great people. Because if you take a chance, this is my big dismount people, when you take a chance on differences, the truth is you're really just filling in gaping holes that exist in your business plan. So, thank you very much. This is your fun time where you applaud like mad. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So, um, if you have any questions, I'm here for questions. And if you don't have any questions about what I just talked about, if you have any questions about life um, or um, recommendations on where to go in New York, I'm here. Any questions? Anyone know how to make that pancake noodle soup? Anyone? Yes? <laughs> All right, excellent. Okay, excellent. So you were talking about diversity and, and including or filling those gaping holes in more traditional companies where this is not known or just actually an issue. Do you have a migration path for people like HR to help them understand that this is helping the whole company? To, to help the company understand that diversity is important? Exactly. Um, uh, honestly, no. I mean, I've worked for very large, I think very large companies are, are um, uh, aware and have diversity plans in place and they have they check all the boxes on what they should be doing but on a base level I do think that uh, a lot of companies um, give lip service to diversity but then when it comes down to it don't realize um, don't go the extra mile and it's, it's very similar to entertainment where they say we're always looking for female comedy writers, and they genuinely are, and I don't think, I think the people who are in entertainment are feminists. I don't think they hate women. I, I don't think there's any um, ill will, but I think when it comes down to it, um, they don't go the extra mile. So unfortunately, what we need to do is just uh, hire more people with differences, and those people tend to bring in other people. You know, I had uh, many employees. I had one employee who moved to Colorado. Um, do you think I was going to let her go? She was amazing. She was amazing. I said, you can move to Fiji. If you're doing your work, that's fine. We kept someone uh, much longer who knew the company uh, 
whereas there are just a lot of people who are in the old headset, like, oh, you need to show up at work, or this won't look good. You know, if you're doing your work, uh, I don't care how different you are, I don't care how far away you are, and that's kind of the beauty of technology. But I guess that would be a human resources. There, there should be a better carrot, you know, in many companies to hire diversely. I think, you know, a French company, very open-minded. They have a lot of women who are engineers. I would say far more than I've experienced in the. Um, American companies go to a party in Paris and, you know, there are all these young, fantastically fashionable women who are working on self-driving cars and I'm sure it's the same in Germany and I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> We need more of this. So on the level of all those people who are helping bring diversity to coding schools, show um, women and minorities that uh, they can do it, I would suppose that's where it starts. You have a question. I wondered how you dealt with resistance among your colleagues. Were there moments when you questioned yourself and thought, maybe I am barking up the wrong tree, maybe I'm being silly, and, and they're right, we don't need this mode or we don't need these features? Um, good question. Uh, I would say on the Withings side, they're always supportive. In fact, so supportive, and I'm not doing PR for my company here. They're so supportive, seriously, that I come up with a crazy idea and they go, great, let's do it. I'm sorry, I'm not going to try to do my bad French accent. They just say, it's fantastic, go for it. And sometimes I'm like, whoa, guys, shouldn't we think about this? You know, there, there's very much a spirit of great, let's do it. Oh, I get challenged sometimes on wordings, and the, I love how I get challenged on certain things, but when it comes to big ideas, and this was, this pregnancy mode was kind of in roadmap, you know, so um, I, I, I'm just saying that, like, they're very supportive, and one should always work at a company that says yes to your crazy ideas. Like, if you work at a company where they're always saying no, but I think that what they do is that they respect the expertise of each person. So I've been a writer and editor. I'm the only one who's been a mom. Uh, there wasn't too much oversight, and I kind of, uh, you know, love that. As long as I worked with the doctors and the developers, it was all good. Any other questions? You were taking a picture. I hope to God it was flattering. <laughs> um, any other questions? Yes. I have a sip of this lovely sparkling water. Hi, Susan. Thank you for this amazing talk. Um, so I can imagine that uh, the support of your team comes with your convincing personality. And I have a question on your self-confidence. I think I never saw a woman that self-confident, which radiates the whole room. And um, were you born like that? Or, <laughs> <laughs> or how did you work on it? <laughs> Was I born like that? Um, I think so, yes. <laughs> um, started performing. Uh, as soon as I could, in fact, when I was a kid, true story, um, there were auditions. Uh, I did get opportunities to be on TV when I was a kid, and my mother didn't want that. She said, child actors are screwed up. And, but there were auditions for Annie on Broadway. Do you know the musical? Yeah, there were auditions, and she wouldn't let me go, so I ran away from home, and they found me on the highway walking in the wrong direction. One direction is New York City. The other direction is the end of Long Island, and next stop, France, you know? Um, why am I confident? I have two older brothers. I, one of my brothers, uh, my biggest influence, big nerd, um, I was playing D&D &D and role-playing games, and computer games and I was obsessed with technology. He had a shag rug and I used to go through his carpet looking for quarters like an addict, you know, <laughs> to hit the arcades. But was I uh, born like this? I think so. I think so. I had two very, uh, my mother wasn't confident but she grew that way. Uh, my father was super confident, super confident. But I think that I love 
it, it's going to sound so tacky, but uh, helping all people find their confidence and knowing that they are enough. And uh, that's super important. And here I am, I'm talking to you right now. I'm genuinely more interested in you. I, I'm almost sorry that I'm talking because I know a lot about myself and I don't know anything about you people who are sitting here. And so you are just way more interesting to me, FYI. So let's talk after. <laughs> Any other questions? What are we at? We have literally two minutes, people. Come on, question, or I'll start doing show tunes, and that is a threat. Any questions? No? You also don't seem like you want show tunes. So I think I'm just going to wrap it up, ask you to applaud wildly, and say thank you so much. This is my first time ever in Germany. <laughs> Woo! <laughs>